am in my seventh year as a full-time RVer. And a lot of you always ask me, what are some of the biggest regrets I have about my RV life? I've given that a lot of thought and I've come up with five regrets that I have about things that I wish maybe I had done a little bit differently since I've been on the road. The last two are big ones, really, really big ones. So make sure you stay tuned till the end to uh, see what the two biggest ones are because I think there's some lessons in there for you as well in life, not just RV life. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. And please do me a favor, watch as much of this video as you can because that really helps my channel. And make sure you check the subscription button. Make sure you're still subscribed because every time I say this, you guys say, yes, in fact, I was unsubscribed and I don't know how. So uh, without much further ado, I think I'm gonna have to go inside because it's kind of windy, but let's talk about the five things I regret in uh, more than six years on the road. Okay, so the first regret I have about how I have lived my RV life uh, for almost seven years, uh, seven years in April, is you guys remember Matilda? <laughs> you probably knew that Matilda was going to be on this list. I regret my first RV. I didn't have a lot of money. I was living in the San Francisco Bay Area. I know, uh, boy, back then RVs were a lot cheaper than they are today. I know that. But I only spent $8,000 cash for my first RV. At one point, I added up how much money I put into it the first year, and it was about $20,000. So my idea that I would... Uh, save money to replenish my 401k and things like that went out the window that first year. I was like, oh, I'm not going to be paying $1,500 in rent and I'll be able to put all that money away. And, you know, uh, it took me a long time. I only had that RV like a little over a year and it took me a long time to recover from all the money I dumped into it. So that's regret number one. And the lesson for you is if you are thinking about starting RV life and you're buying a used van, a used RV, a used bus or whatever, make sure you get it checked out before you buy it. I was stupid. So many mistakes I made on that. I couldn't even really give it a thorough test drive because the, they, it had no brakes. The brakes were squealing, which was stupid. Um, I should have said, go fix the brakes. I made a lot of mistakes on that. And I think um, I've done videos about all the mistakes I've made and how to buy an RV. So so I will put those videos in the video description and also in a pinned comment so that you can check out those videos. But that is regret number one, buying a big fat lemon. <laughs> and regret number two is silly. It's silly, silly, silly. But my for second regret uh, about my RV life is putting valve stem extenders on my duals. Yeah, I know. Do you guys remember all the issues I had with valve stem extenders last year? Um, sitting in the middle of nowhere in Michigan, uh, brand new tires and uh, all of a sudden my tires were going flat. Just, they were a disaster. Here's what I've realized since then though. So another, a little tip for you. Valve stem extenders aren't bad if you're not driving off-road. Uh, the reason I had so many issues with the valve stem extenders is because I was driving on rocky roads over rocks and branches and ditches and potholes and mud puddles which were um, catching on them and causing them to get loose. I mean, they're problematic anyway, and I think most RVers talk about how problematic they are, and even truckers, but if you're staying on road, they're not going to be as problematic as they were for me driving off-road. You know, they're just these metal things that screw onto your valve stems to extend them so that you can check the, uh, the pressure in your tires. You know, in theory, they're very useful. But think about that when things are rubbing against them, they get bent and plus I had bad plastic valves in my um, tires. When they installed the new tires, they put plastic valves in. So that's another tip for you. If you're getting tires put on any heavy duty vehicle, make sure you ask them for metal valve stems. You don't want the plastic. I think Richard said they were like throw away or something. They, they were really, really bad. So make sure you ask for metal valve stems, not even extenders, but the, the actual stems need to be metal, especially if you drive off road like I do. And my third regret about 
my RV life as I'm living it now, and you guys have heard me talk about this before, is starting another business. I, you know, I love what I do. I love connecting with all of you. It's a dream come true to be able to share myself the way I do and to connect with an audience like you. Uh, and I, and I, it, this is going to touch into number five a lot. But um, while I don't regret now having a YouTube channel because it has opened up, a, you know, a world I've made friends and I've gotten to know some wonderful people and it has really become a dream come true. But at the same time, uh, in order to achieve that, I have had to do my RV life differently. I've had to give things up. You know, I mean, sure, I could have, and maybe that's the lesson here, is I could have done it differently. I could have maybe kept it a hobby, and so that I didn't have all the pressures on me to perform, to upload content, to create content, to spend so much time building a brand new business. If I had kept it as a hobby, I could have just done it when I wanted to do it, and maybe that's that's the lesson here. Maybe that is what I should have done. Um, because instead, I, instead of hitting the road for a simpler life, I kind of um, just recreated my old life in a lot of ways. And so, yeah, I think that's another lesson. Just remember that Going out on the road, and I feel like this is going to overlap too much into number five, but going out on the road isn't necessarily going to change who you are. And I've said that before. Going out on the road chasing any dream isn't going to fix you. It's not going to be a cure. Just because you change your circumstances, just because you change your location, um, just because you live in, a, in an RV instead of uh, sticks and bricks doesn't mean that your life is magically going to be better, that you're magically going to get better. And I have talked about this in a lot of videos. My life is an ongoing process of learning how to be the person I want to be. It's a lifelong journey of finding out who I am and really looking every year, you know, looking and saying, or every day or every month, looking at myself and saying, okay, how can I do better next time? And a lot of that has to do with self-care and uh, finding a work-life balance. And just because I moved into an RV and I was living in the wilderness doesn't mean I was, you know, um, any better at the work-life balance. I just took on another huge project, uh, which in a way took me away from the life that I came out here for. So that leads me into number four. Let's get to number four. Fourth regret I have, which kind of ties into the next one, is not stopping and smelling the roses more often. You know, I get so often I get wrapped up in having to get from point A to point B. You know, it's a, it's a, uh, rigidness. I became a little rigid and must boondock, must boondock, <laughs> must find boondocking no matter how many, how tired I am, how many miles I have to drive. I could have paid for three of the most expensive campgrounds <laughs> over and over again. I mean, I've become so rigid in, in my ways. You know, we all kind of get set in our ways and kind of forget to stop and think, wait, does this really make sense? Or am I just kind of charging forward based on a belief that could change? So there's two parts to number four. Number one is not stopping to smell the road roses, which really is caused by a rigidness in my beliefs. And that I must do this, I must do that, I must get a video up tonight, I must answer comments tonight, I must get a newsletter out tonight. It's, Instead of saying, you know what? No, it doesn't matter. Stop. If there's a pretty lake, stop. And enjoy the pretty lake. <laughs> Let Sadie go for a swim. Get out. Go for a walk. You know, I mean, last year when I traveled to the east, uh, I was so go, go, go that I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't getting exercise. I wasn't eating well. And so I'm trying to do things a little differently this year. Well, since then, every year, I try to do better than I did the year before. The wind's coming up again. So that was number four, my biggest regret number four, being too rigid in my beliefs, not, believe it or not, not being flexible enough, and not stopping to smell the roses more often. So that's number four. You ready for number five? We're gonna sit down in the rig and do that one again. Okay, and now are you ready for number five, my fifth 
biggest regret about how I have lived my RV life. Before I tell you what number five is, again, please double check and make sure you're subscribed. Thank you for watching this video all the way through. And I will put um, some of the videos you might like in the video description and a pinned comment. My fifth regret, and again, this overlaps a lot with number three and four, but my fifth regret is that I didn't keep my dream, my goal, my mission, of what I wanted my RV life to be, I didn't keep that front and center. I, I got, I let myself get distracted. I let myself get really pulled back in a lot of ways into a life I wanted to leave. You know, I get, um, it's, it's humid here, so pardon the sweat. <laughs> Um, I, I get criticized every once in a while. Oh, you're just, you know, living the same life. You still are materialistic, whatever. You know, I get criticized for everything. But, you know, there are a lot of people who say, you're still living the same life. Who are you kidding? You're still participating in the um, capitalist society. Well, for one thing, yes, that's true. For But because this is the world in which we live... And if I don't want to, there's, there's literally no way to not participate in the capitalist society, even Amish, <laughs> you know, you go through Amish country and they're going to the gas station and buying gas, you know? So it, it's literally impossible. I think in the United States to not participate in the capitalist society, it's just impossible. But what I have done right, uh, in my opinion, is I have used the system that I live in. I've used the system that I really wanted to leave to my advantage. I have been able to take what I like and leave the rest. You know, I'm able to live on the road. I'm able to live on my terms. I'm able to look the way I want to look on my channel and not have to buy into the capitalist makeup. And I must look a certain way. I must wear the right clothes. I must bathe every day. I must dye my hair. So in that way, Way, I have followed through with my dream or my mission of RV living, also living closer to nature. And to me, that living closer to nature isn't about just living with the trees in the forest. It's about me being a natural woman. But while that is definitely true that I've been able to kind of work within the system to create my own life, to carve out my own life on my terms, there are certainly things that I envisioned my life to be um, that are very different from what it is. Number one, I didn't expect to have unlimited electricity. Sure, I mean, I don't really have unlimited electricity compared to sticks and bricks, but I have far more electricity than I ever thought I would. Um, and part of that goes back to number three. It's because I need it to be able to work as much as I work. And and this, the other thing is I never expected to be as connected to internet as I am, as I'm constantly connected to internet now. And and I had to think about that. That was a big decision when I decided to get Starlink. Do I really want to be connected that much? And I had to weigh the pros and cons of it. And in the end, the, the pro of it is I am able to go more remote than I was able to go before because the bottom line is I wouldn't go off grid more than a night or two. I mean, and that was hard. Uh, sure, it was nice and I could read instead of watch a movie or answer comments all night or read comments all night. Uh, but the bottom line is I wasn't going as, as remote as I wanted to go because I didn't have internet. So everything is a payoff, right? I have Starlink, so I'm always connected, but I have Starlink, I'm also able to go more remote. So there are little things that I envisioned and I ran across a, a journal entry from when I first started or when I was thinking about starting and I really did envision my life being a lot different. I envisioned a lot more freedom. I envisioned a lot more free time. I envisioned uh, a lot more uh, just off-grid communing with nature. And it's really, really hard at 50 years old. I was 48 when I hit the road. I'm 55 now. It's really, really hard to change a lifetime of habits and indoctrination. Uh, you know, we are products of our environments, both within our home and without our home in the community and the society. We are Americans. We are very consumerist. And it is very hard to change lifelong habits of, of you know, when I, after a long day of work, I would rather watch 
some TV than read a book or, um, you know, sit out and stare at a tree, especially living alone. Uh, I don't do those things as much as I thought I would do. So I, that's the biggest regret. That's, that's my, my, my biggest regret is that I didn't thoroughly, I made a lot of sacrifices in the decisions that I made. Number one, starting a new business. Number two, you know, getting more um, comforts, you know, electricity and internet and things like that, you know, getting solar installed. So I, I gave up a lot in order to have a lot of the comforts that I was used to. Does this make any sense at all? I feel like it's kind of uh, esoteric. I feel like it's kind of hard to explain exactly what I mean by this, but uh, I don't know. And even now, when I think about the next phase of my life and living in a cabin, I imagine living completely off grid, no internet, you know, no running water. And I, I know eventually I will get internet and I will get running water because this is the world in which we live. And it is extremely difficult to live without those things in a world w when the world around us has all those things. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, and I'm not blaming anyone but myself. These are the decisions that I made. And while I'm calling this regrets, there have definitely been some benefits to the choices that I've made as well. And again, one of them is being a YouTuber. You know, I, I love my job. I love my job. And I think all the sacrifices that I made, um, I got a lot out of the, the choices that I made. You know what I'm saying? So while I gave up some things, I also gained some things. I gained a lot of things. And now though, so let me tell you where I'm at with these regrets that I have. Like I said, it's, it's a constant journey. I'm on a lifelong journey of trying to improve and trying to be more self-aware. And so for me, what it means right now is just being more mindful about my choices, being more mindful about how much screen time I have. This year, really, and slowing down and spending my summer in mostly one location really helped to kind of recenter me and to say, okay, this is what I need. I need to walk at least three miles every day or I don't feel good. If I don't get a walk in in the morning and I try to do at least three in the morning and then maybe another mile at night, but I'm averaging about three, three and a half miles a day. If I don't do that, I don't eat right. It's just kind of like it snowballs. When you don't take care of yourself in one area, it snowballs into not taking care of myself in other areas. So that's the lesson I have learned from all of my regrets. And I, and I don't really like calling them regrets because I think everything is an opportunity to learn. And I don't regret the choices that I make because they have given me opportunities to learn, to understand myself better, to take care of myself better. The bottom line always is, just being mindful, being as self-aware as we can be in the moment. And sometimes that evolves as we go. And just remembering to slow down and take care of ourselves. And also just again, the biggest message is the road isn't going to change you. Living in an RV isn't going to change you. Moving to the country isn't going to change you. It's going to change your circumstances, but it's still going to be up to you to change what's going on in here and in here. All right. What do you think? Was this helpful, interesting, educational, entertaining? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you and I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. I will see you soon. What about you? You want to say bye? Okay, bye.